President and Chief Executive Officer for Philippine Daily Inquirer. We also have with us Ms. Lydia Wang from Star uh, Media. And um, you all know the drill. Uh, just raise your hands. If you have any questions, tell us where you're from. And again, we're going to be limiting any questions for our press conference with regards to our event for today. Okay, so over to anyone here. We've got the microphone at the side, or we can just swing by. Hi, uh, Gerard here from The Star. Uh, so this question is open to all three participating CEOs. Uh, maybe you can just elaborate on why this uh, AEPIC was formed and what were the pressing matters that made the three of you realize that, this, that the three of you had to join forces for this initiative? Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. On the question as to why this consortium is formed, I think back in early of this year, we have seen you know, from many business uh, communications and engagement that we suddenly realized that this ESG practices in the private sector, particularly the SME sector, is actually quite a tough thing for them to follow. So with that, you know, so we try to conceive the ideas of having more ESG engagement and so forth. And also happened that you know, Miss Lydia you know, met up with two of our partners during one of the conference. So straight away, you know, she struck the idea of forming a consortium to help the business society as well as the general public. And at the same time, take this as a social cause, you know, to help the country and the regions. That is what I know so far. Maybe my partner will tell you a little bit more because they are more involved. Thank you. Yeah, I think the, the IPIC, the ACI ESG Positive Impact Consortium is, is a continuation of what we as individual media has been doing for the uh, for sustainability in each of our on each of our own country, but we realize that um, there is a very very challenging situation in terms of uh, the achievement of SDGs sustainable sustainable development goals that each country cannot you know cannot solve the problem just by its own, especially just become just being a single media, so that's what we come up uh, well. Again, Mrs. Lydia, to her credit, is the one who initiated the, 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 the conversations that, you know, countries should work together and we as media players can be the one who, you know, who, who spearheaded the, the movements that, you know, Asia should, should, be, um, should be together to solve the problems that uh, we're, we're facing in terms of sustainability. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just add to what Andy and uh, Sangfat uh, already mentioned. We're thankful that Lydia initiated uh, this project. No, uh, prior to this, we've been doing, the Inquire Group has been doing projects, ESG projects uh, for quite some time, but we were not doing it deliberately. So we decided why don't we take a stock of what we're doing, put the brand to it, we used, we used uh, ESG Edge. And for greater impact uh, and taking on what uh, Lydia initiated and uh, uh, have our efforts um, amplified across the region. So uh, that way we'll have a greater impact. And also uh, there's also a recognition that uh, as neighbors, uh, we basically have the same issues, concerns, problems, and by putting our uh, heads together, we'll be able to solve them. Maybe Lydia, as a Lydia, maybe you wanna just add on to that. Yeah, as a project initiator, maybe you have something <laughs> to say. From a media perspective. Our biggest power, so to speak, 
is really our ability to influence, inform, and move the communities. And in our respective countries, we saw the gaps, and we realized just communicating within our own countries are just not enough. Why we started with Indonesia and Philippines? Because we are very strong trade partners. And we all know ESG is a prerequisite of trade. We need to get our ESG right before we can talk about economic growth. And at the same time, we realize in the communities that we have, people struggle to even get basic information. People struggle to understand jargons. So this morning, collaboratively across the three media powerhouses, we had our first editorial meeting discussing about content that we can run deliberately across the different countries to educate, for example, topics on poverty, topics on environment, and engaging in research on how we can improve the livelihood of the rakyats in our respective country. Any more questions? Otherwise, I've got plenty. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, hi, good afternoon. I'm Terence from the staff. Um, this question is for all. Uh, for all. And um, what are some of the major goals of the consortium in the next 12 months? Thank you. Sorry, what, what was the sorry? What was that again? What are some of the major goals of the consortium in the next What are the major months? goals? Or perhaps like what is the main or biggest gap that the consortium plans to bridge first? I think uh, it's quite obvious that our motive is to help you know, all those uh, practitioners involved, all those uh, society involved, to have a better understanding of these EHG practices and principles. And also at the same time, we strongly believe in our own self that you know, if this ESG principle can be practiced as a, as a norm, as a standard, that will definitely help the economy and the society to be in a more healthy and uh, equitable manner. And uh, the main purpose, of course, you know, we are using our media power you know, to help not only the society, but also at the same time, the government to disseminate policies and also at the same time, let people have a chance you know, to have a platform to learn and have the resources you know, to, to, to even to, uh, en to engage, you know, something like that. Right. Yeah, I think uh, as a media company, um, we reach the, the public and then we reach other stakeholders as well, like businesses and government. So the goals are in each of those stakeholders for the public. I think we as a media company, we have all measurements how well our content reach the population, how many, how, much audi how many audience are reached by our sustainability content, for example. And to businesses is how well best practices are shared in our community. And for government, I think probably one of the most important stakeholders is how our our journalism, our content, have impact on their policy, on the on the change maker, uh, on the decision makers' policy. Uh, as media companies, uh, on a daily basis, we uh, carry out our task of informing the public. Uh, so, with this uh, consortium, we're taking it one step further. So we're, we're focusing on a topic that's important uh, to the Philippines and uh, the rest of Asia, no? and uh, educating them no, about the importance, uh, how critical ESG principles are. Um, the overall, overall objective is to really use our collective reach to reach a, to talk to a broader audience and uh, over time, drive uh, action no? that will create solutions uh, that will allow us to uh, achieve sustainab sustainable practices. Okay, I've got a few questions. Um, now, in in um, I think the, this the MOU was signed 
uh, or launched uh, in somewhere in March, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, the consortium plans to establish a like-minded fraternity that will serve as a voice for authority. So who are you aiming to helm um, and be drivers of this frat, this fraternity? I, I, I can't remember where I read it. I think it was one of the news. Uh, uh, Lydia will take the question. Yeah. yeah, so for the fraternity, what we are, what we are aiming is to pull together companies or um, entities that have walked the talk. That means people who have done it and judge as good. That's why when we started the award, it was not for the sake of a trophy, but it was for the sake of pulling out best practices and not just any best practices. It's judged and gauged as best. Right, so best in water management, best in energy, and so forth. And then we use this case to help expedite or shorten the, the learning curve for people in the same space. So when we talk about fraternity of like-minded um, ESG practitioners, that's what we mean. We bring together the best in class, and we help the community come up to speed. I think one of the biggest problems are not just not the PLCs, but really the non-PLCs, the SMEs, the people who don't have the resource or the know-how or the finances to actually embark on this ESG. How can we help them gain that knowledge without the expensive consultancies and so forth? And of course, we're inviting other media powerhouses like yourselves uh, to be on board. Of course, now we've got Malaysia, Philippines, as well as Indonesia. Um, have we invited other countries to just, hey, come, come, come? Or has anyone, you know, my daughter says, FOMO, fear of missing out, all right? Has anyone, like, since the MOU, and of course, this probably has gone digital already, has anyone said, like, hey, we're interested, we're, we're from Vietnam, we're from Thailand? Anyone else coming in to join this initiative that you guys have already said yes to? Um, no. Or cannot be officially mentioned, is it? <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. Uh, before we even did the first announcement, we actually talked to quite a few countries. And you realize the countries on board here all speak English very well. <laughs> okay. We have a few more in the pipeline, so we're very excited. Uh, watch this space. We are, our, our vision is that we will be able to drive the ESG uh, agenda with a larger community of media powerhouses across Asia, right? And this is the very, very first in Asia to launch a consortium of media powerhouses, not just any regular companies, but media powerhouses who have the ability to reach, influence, and move things. Now, one of the challenges to ESG implementation is, of course, the regulatory barrier from various international um, regulations, as well as, of course, the reporting standards that businesses are expected to adhere to and to prioritize as this will impact them. If you had a wish list, okay, just, it's just like think Christmas is coming, all right? If you had a wish list, what country or who would you want to be desperately on board to make things move? Because we can talk and yap and, and do all these launches and stuff, but at the end of the day, we, there, there is bound to be one or two that's going to be key in making, let's do this. I don't care if it's not going to make me popular or if this has to be done. Who, who would that be besides, of course, uh, Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia? Who, who would that person or country or organization be? If you had a wish list, we can just have a wish list. Law of attraction, asking for it. <laughs> I put them in a bit of a. Our uh, wish list about to come true. Oh wow! <laughs> wow! See, law of attraction comes early, so it's uh, okay. So that's going to be another announcement, I assume. It's in the works. It's in the works. Okay. See. Okay. I'm just scrolling <laughs> out. Any more questions? Because I've got lots and lots of questions. Okay. Back to you, Star. One more question again for, for everyone on this one. So in like every environmental project, there's always criticisms that, uh, that it's a form of greenwashing. Or like, so how does this consortium ensure that this is not just another greenwashing attempt and, uh, and how can we avoid criticisms of greenwashing on, in our efforts? Thank you. Or is there any sense of metric measurements and how do you know that this collaboration is working? 
like how do we indicate that it's 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 happening it's not just what you were saying you know what would be the key indicators Yes, uh, I think impact is, is the main matrix because I think it can be understood that every company will have you know, certain ESG initiative that, that they've been doing. For example, in Indonesia, every public company is, is by regulation, they have to have a sustainability report. That means they have to you know, perform some sort of sustainability initiatives. But again, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's what matters is impact, how the initiative impact the society. So that's why it's Asia ESG, Positive Impact Consortium, so the measurable uh, KPI for success of, of our consortium should be how does you know, ESG initiatives across the Asia Pacific actually have positive impacts on the region. Again, if we're talking about goals, um, 2015, the United Nations, all, all countries of United Nations already adopted the SDGs goals, 17 goals, and we are only 15% on track so far. To, to achieve um, what's supposed to be achieved by 2030. So only six years left, but only 15% of the goals are on track. In fact, there is a report that it will actually take another 32 years to achieve what was going to be achieved, uh, what was targeted to be achieved uh, back in 2015. So I think impact is, should be the, the main, one of the main um, KPIs of how we see our consortium um, um, contributing to, to the Asia-Pacific ESG or SDG um, progress. Um, in addition to the metrics, uh, probably there are also built-in safeguards in the way we will hold the uh, APIC awards. Uh, first, there's the, we have a list of categories now. So the categories are very specific. Second, uh, Lydia mentioned that what we aim for are to recognize efforts that are the best in class. So I think that's another form of safeguard. And then third probably is that there are basically two types of screenings, a screening done in each of the countries, member countries, and another one uh, at the regional awards. So that would, uh, again, I think, provide a safeguard against uh, fears of uh, greenwashing. Perhaps I can also add, besides the award where we will have um, professionals on board with us to look at and filter the criteria and so forth, at the journalistic level, just this very morning, we were talking about how can we ensure um, that we don't inadvertently uh, promote greenwashing, right? Because it's very dangerous. We, we may not, we have so many journalists running around doing these stories. So one of the way was um, there's, a, there's a training that's go, go on to train journalists on how to spot uh, greenwashing stories. Um, how do we do the research and make sure that we, we uh, have integrity in our stories? And the second uh, conversation that we were going to leverage on KG Media's expertise is research. And we talk about cross-country research um, to find out uh, the metrics of where um, other companies and also the consumers. So it's very interesting, right? Firstly, what is the acceptance of a consumer towards or how important they think ESG is? And then at the corporate level, they may figure that they have done a lot, but maybe not. So henceforth the research. I'm just looking at you, All right? We're good. Meja yang sebelah sana, ada tak soalan? Do you have any questions from there? At the back? No? All right, we're good. Is there any final words that you would like to just punch in? We, I mean, we've got not just our own media here, but also media from outside, that you want to just encourage for our own journalists here in Malaysia to make sure that they, you know, create the awareness that we should be doing since yesterday and beyond. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll start off probably with the lady, Lydia. I heard just now, you were, we, we were talking to the gentleman about how there's not enough diversity. Yes. yes. Perhaps that's something that you and I can discuss too. 
actually we also have the same problem within my group. They are all female. So like what I say, it's not just one way. <laughs> I think if you look at my team, they're all female. I mean, male, we are lacking in manpower. So I'm, I'm not a good one to preach, but certainly I think um, we would like to give equal opportunity to talents uh, across board and um, also different ethnicity for sure. We're, we're just happy to have the formal launch today, and uh, we're also excited to uh, work out the next 12 months. Well, I think uh, with today's formal launching and with the crew of uh, attendees that with us today, you can see there's, the idea is quite well received in the marketplace. And I'm presently surprised with so many uh, technically representation attended this uh, particular forum and I think that is a silent endorsement and a testament for this good cause of program and I hope that with today formal launching you know we will definitely intensify you know the acceptance and also adopt the principle and practices of ESG to reach a wider uh, community and just like what Andy have just now said you know the achievement so far only below 20 percent they are a long way for us to catch up so I always think that it is something that is not for somebody to wait but rather for all of us to catch up that is my view better late than never sir Finally. Yeah, I think with the launch today, uh, we would like to open the doors, especially for other media houses uh, across Asia to join IPIC. Um, we have a lot, of, a lot of work to do on sustainability, and we would like to enable IPIC to achieve this, uh, this journey uh, for a greater impact together across Asia. Now, all of you are powerhouses, but do you have, are you going to be selective about those who come and join your consortium? Or it can just be any media who's just interested in contributing to SG? Yeah, I think what uh, Lydia, as what Lydia said, uh, we would like, you know, prioritize the, the most influential, you know, nice. the most biggest national brands of media to join. Um, but again, um, we will see how that works. <laughs> but what, because I think uh, member, uh, uh, representation of all countries across Asia is important. So yes, the, the wish list is there, but the wish list is actually not only the media, but the countries to, to all join together. Yang Amabohomat stayed on for makan, right, just now? So uh, you, you all had like a little uh, after like a little tea time with uh, Yang Omar Bahoma yeah. just now. Did he add on anything that was not said already on stage that he would like to share with us? <laughs> Did he say something? Because he comes up with something out of his hat. Suddenly he'll just come up with something, and maybe you know we were not privy to that because we weren't in you know in that little VIP area. But did he say anything that he will come and do more for to help the consortium? Okay, their lips are sealed, I guess. Until it's official, that's how news works. Well, I, I, I think I, a little bit unfortunate I was not at the same table <laughs> to, uh, with him. But I hear from the background, obviously he was quite happy in a very jovial mood after the launch. And uh, from that, uh, what we call background feel, obviously this launching have hit one of the targets of our 17 goals is create happiness. That's true. <laughs> happiness is key, ladies and gentlemen. With that, thank you so much once again to all our panelists in front of us. Thank you. It's been a long day and there's still lots more to do. So please get some rest. And to members of the media, thank you for staying all the way till the end. My name is Daphne Iking. On behalf of Alvin and myself, it's been a pleasure being your MC for today. And I guess with that, drive safe. I hope one day we can get our EV cars cheaper here in Malaysia, I'm just saying. Uh, with that, take care everyone and I'll see you in our next event. Bye-bye. <laughs>